Hey guys, what is up? Happy to be back with episode 8, part 1 of my golf vlog series, this time at Bull Run Golf Club. As you guys can see, I'm trying something new here with this episode. I always felt it was a little bit awkward for me to try to do my intro as I'm hitting my first shot of the round, so I thought a few swings of me warming up on the range would be a better way to start the video. I'll put up a timestamp as well for anybody who would rather skip straight to the action on hole 1. But I think this intro would serve as a good way for me to give a preview of the round so that I'm not actually doing that during any of my shots in the golf course. So that being said, let's get into it. So going into this round, this is actually one of those rounds where I was kind of experimenting with a new golf ball. Callaway sent me a new softer Chrome Soft X and the intention of this ball is for it to go a little straighter. The ball speeds won't be quite as high but I think it will produce better golf. So that's something I was experimenting with today. So I think I'm going into my, we're still my four iron here, I think. And see, I'm just kind of getting into the groove, st trying to feel out my swing. It's been like three days since I played, so I'm just trying to feel everything out, hitting a few stingers, because I know I haven't played this course before, but I do know that this is a course you really need to keep it in between the stakes on for sure. You can definitely get in trouble if you start letting your tee shots get away from you. So just trying to feel feel everything, make sure that the club's, ball's moving good, club's moving good, body's moving good. So just grooving it right here, and now I'm working into my driver. I always try to keep my driver shots to a minimum because I'm obviously probably not going to get those shots back. But I'm really excited to play this course. I also flashed the course information earlier in the video. And it was a little windy today. But this was a very gettable course. I felt like it suited my game pretty well. And I'd always heard a lot about Bull Run. But i never quite gotten the chance to play it. So here we go. So hole one, par four, 380 yards. A little bit of wind off the right. Just trying to hit it over that left bunker right there. You can see the pin right over that bunker and I hit it right at the green. This is an absolutely perfect drive. Almost hit into those guys in the green down there. I didn't think I could get it that far, but rolled out pretty nicely and really, really great position off the tee here. So probably about 25 yards or so. One of the toughest parts about this course was how tight the fairways were around the greens. Really had to be careful and on top of your game to avoid flubbing shots, especially with the way the grain was. Another thing that was pretty tough, these greens were punched about a week ago. And I've heard a lot about bull runs, greens being amazing. And that's why I can't wait to come back here in the summer. Because these greens, obviously, at this point, were pretty punched. But they were still rolling pretty good. But in the summer, I really think I can go low on this course when everything's rolling smooth and rolling true. So just another note about the greens today. So hole two, par five, and sound up for my first big tee shot of the day. So that was rifled right down the middle. And you can see there how the ball speeds down a bit, but here's the thing. The spin is really good, and the ball is going pretty straight. So I, I'm liking this ball, though. I'm really impressed with this ball that Callaway sent me. So I'm still not too sure whether I'm going to go with the firmer one or the softer one but I like this one so far. And you can see there, 200 yards of 9-iron. I didn't intend to get this to the pin. It could have gotten there if it got into the wind and maybe rode the wind a bit. But as I've said in earlier episodes, I always try to set myself up to miss short. I feel like I have more control over my destiny if I'm short. I feel like I can hit better putts. And as I say that, I hit a putt about 10 feet by. But... Typically, below the hole is always better than along the hole. That's one of the things I've always kind of kept with me as I've progressed in golf. So about 12 feet left, a little right to the left side winder. Really pure stroke here and really great birdie save there. That really would have sucked to three putt for par again. I've done that a couple times already in this series. So hole three, one under par, nine iron, 181 yards. Definitely a very gettable hole here. Pin was in the back right. Sound up. 
pull this one just a bit. You can see the bunker there. That is where this ball will end up. I actually hit the right edge of the bunker and filtered back in. So not a terrible leave though, as you can see, successfully keeping it under the hole again. So okay shot from there. So just trying to be aggressive here and clip this one out. And I hit this one, I was like, oh, this one's gonna be close. And I think that landed in a punch mark. It bounced almost straight up and went nowhere. But that's just the nature of golf this time of year when everything's been punched. You just got to adjust to it as best you can. I kind of like that challenge. I think it's a pretty fun way to play golf because you never know what kind of bounce you're going to get when greens are punched. So, yeah, as good of a putt as I hit on hole two, probably equally as bad of a putt there, maybe even worse of a putt. So quickly dropped the shot. So back to even par, hole four, 432 yards. A bit of a dog leg left. Trying to, I'm trying to hit it over the right edge of that bunker, and ended up bleeding this one out to the right. <clears throat> so definitely didn't do myself any favors there off the tee. This was annoying because I really thought I could get this hole, and this was such a bad lie. Oh my gosh! Like I can't even explain how bad of a lie this is. Like watch in a couple seconds here. I'm literally having to bend down here. <laughs> and look at it to make sure that I can I'm, my club's behind the ball. So I'm just choking down, trying to hack it out. And as you can hear the chorus of tree, tree trunk sounds, that didn't work out too well. <laughs> so still 68 yards away. Third shot, 54 degree wedge again. Trying to just run it up there. And I thought this was going to be a good shot. And you can see the last second it kind of bounces off to the left. Must have just been me not reading that really well on the green. So still a lot of work left for a par. Absolutely been making a mess out of the last two holes so far. So got about 15 to 18 feet left to save my par. Bit of a pull. Again, another really poor putt. Never really had a chance. So not a great start through four, especially with how the conditions are very favorable. R really need to be able to tack these holes better. So hole five, one over, and now I'm going to unleash my fury on this two iron here. Kaboom. So that was pretty pure shot right there. Definitely felt good. The really, really cool thing about these balls, as soft as they are, the compression just sounds so nice. So it really is a good feeling ball. So 109 yards left, 50 degree wedge. Pin is in the back right, I think maybe back center. So this is kind of a diff difficult shot. I'm just trying to feather it in there and kind of put it in that back shelf. So you can see there, pretty good flight. Lands pretty far back there. It was uphill, so the carry was a little bit less than 118 yards, as it says there. So hit it a little long, but it did hold the green. So kind of a pretty average shot from there. That's one of my biggest goals this summer. I'm trying to get it much tighter and from 130 yards in. I think that will lead to a lot better scores. And I really thought this was going to be a very slick putt. But I, I was just, I've kind of found myself guessing on these greens all day. And I think one of the biggest things I struggle with is when, the, when a course's main defense is its greens, and I've never played it before, and I'm just playing it my first time going around, I really struggle. So something that keep in mind in the future, I guess, for myself. As I say that, really great putt. So pit two great putts and probably four or five really bad ones so far. So still one over. Hole six, par three, 158 yards. Trying to tuck it into that back left corner right there. And I squeezed it out to the right. So with a pitch and wedge in your hand, you definitely want to be going at pins and hitting it tight, not missing wide right like I just did. So leaving myself a lot of work here to get up and down for my par. So a little pitch and wedge here, bump and run action. Just missed the bunker. So like maybe like two yards off the green here, but couldn't putt it. And a little, little tip, my best advice when the greens are aerated putt whenever possible because you'll see see how that ball bounced up and down like that when the greens are bumpy and if you hit a low pitch shot and it hits a hole it bounces straight up you're going to leave yourself a long putt left especially if you've hit your spot 
So try to keep the ball on the ground as much as possible. It'll help m mitigate the effects of airification as much as possible. So probably about 12 feet left here for par, and this is just a misread. Really wasn't that bad of a stroke. Just I don't know these greens well as well as I should, so I'm probably going to get back into getting serious about green reading, and I, got, I was pretty good at it as a junior, so. Oh, by the way, listen to this right here. <laughs> yeah, that was, there was a crew on some homes maybe 100 feet to my right, and they obviously did not care that I was about to tee off. But that's what's, that's what's really impressive about pros. They'll hit great shots through those distractions. So now I'm in a kind of a tough situation here. This is probably one of my best shots of the day. Really curled that around the tree about as good as I could. I was actually pretty shocked at how much I was able to cut around that tree because I didn't know how good of a club I'd be able to get on that ball. Another tip, guys, if you're in the rough and you're trying to like play a slice, wherever you're aiming, play for the ball to go maybe five to eight yards right of wherever you're aiming in terms of where it starts. That'll save you a lot of trees hit probably. So very easy shot in here. You just really want to knock this one close and take advantage. Probably the biggest danger here is putting too much pressure on yourself to hit it close with these easy shots. So, hit my number, but it bounced a little bit further than I would have liked it to. But still very makeable birdie putt to climb back to one over par. So, I had a pretty good read on this putt. Felt pretty comfortable over it too. Made a pretty good stroke and started curling in. And I couldn't believe this one stayed out. I felt that one. In fact, I feel it sitting in this chair too. <laughs> so, not a good five. So, still two over. Hole eight, par four. But good news, it's time for another sound up with a two iron. And if you guys are wondering where that green is, you can see that water way on the distance. The green is actually short of that water. This is only about a 350 yard hole and it dog legs to the right. The green is right behind that last tree in that tree line that's kind of green. You can see from this angle how it bends down to the left. So absolute perfect position here to attack this hole. The only difficulty was there was a slope you can see there. I really tried to fly past the slope so it wouldn't bounce too far down, but that really didn't work. So hit it about eh, 10 12 feet past the hole not a terrible shot but definitely not not what you're looking for you're looking to be kicking one in after where i was on the second shot there so trying to roll it in here for my birdie get that shot back decent stroke just again under read the putt and that's kind of what i found to be a theme on a lot of these holes I just don't think I'm giving the putts the break they need. and I, It just kind of creeps up on you when you're so used to putting on greens that are a little more flat, especially greens that are slow. So, hole nine, sound up. So this hole is actually a lot easier than it looks, at least in my opinion, because there's a ton of room left to miss. So I kind of bailed out to the left here. It's a pretty good miss. And that's something I'm really going to be working on improving as well, not just hitting better shots but learn how to miss well and if you guys ever pay attention to the guys on tour you'll find that while they are really great ball strikers and great golfers obviously what really separates the greats from just the goods is their ability to miss well a tour player who's really won a lot of tournaments his miss might cost him two tenths of a shot and a tour player who's just really good his miss might cost him three tenths of a shot so that's what I found to be a big difference in terms of the elite level of playing. So trying to knock this one in to shoot a one over par 37. Fortunately, it curled a little bit by, so I have about three, two and a half feet left to knock it in for a two over par 38, which I will do. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.